What's going on guys? Josh here from Momentum Productions and today I have a pretty unique tutorial for you. Again, it's gonna feature a slider and the Juin Crane Plus gimbal. We're gonna get some pretty awesome shots with this technique. So we're gonna be using a slider like I mentioned before and a fluid head tripod. The tripod has to be all metal and it has to withstand at least 12 pounds of weight. So make sure you have a tripod like that in order to produce similar shots that I will show you in this video. Now, what is the whole point of this whole setup here? Basically, we're transforming our slider, our tripod, and our crane gimbal into a motorized jib. So basically, you will be able to get cool shots like this. Okay guys, so let me give you kind of a real world demo. I know it's really foggy in here. Uh, I like it foggy. It actually adds a nice, beautiful diffusion to all the lighting. And this is how I get my cool rays that are coming in through all the glass windows. So now that we saw how that looks like, I'm going to slide over to the end of the slider. Make sure your hand is always on the slider. One should be acting as a counterbalance weight and the other one should be supporting the camera cradle or the camera slider cradle for that matter. And let me just test the crane to make sure it's in POV mode. I'm gonna loosen up the tensioners so I can tilt with the tripod head. And it looks like we are not in POV mode. So let me quickly get in there. Still not there. All right, now we are in POV mode. So I'm using the handrails on the stairs to first start off the shot. And now we're going to do a lift up. And the trick is with this shot is to not go too high up because the crane will reset. And remember, you want to constantly have your hands on the slider. Never let go of the slider because a catastrophe will happen. Trust me, I've had it happen many times before and I learned my lesson. So really get comfortable with the movement here. Again, I'm making sure that my hand is either on the camera slider cradle or on the gimbal. So let's practice the shot again. Again, don't go too high because we only have 45 degrees of movement. Okay, so here we are with another compounded movement with this jib. And the really beautiful part about this shot is that we're incorporating a dolly in, boom, and slide. Let me show you how this works. We're gonna slide to the end of the slider, tighten up the camera cradle or slider cradle. Make sure that if you're using a ball head that you keep your hand firmly placed on the ball head. You don't want it slipping. And you want your other hand to act as a counterweight on the opposite end of the slider. Loosen up the tensioners on your tripod head. That way we can use the tilt. And let's start off the shot. Remember, you wanna do your best to move along with this shot. So. We're gonna start down here. Don't go too low, otherwise you might confuse the gimbal and it might jitter a little bit. So we're gonna start down here, dolly in. As we dolly in, we're gonna go up a little bit. As we go up, we're gonna slide, so to speak, to the other end of this shot. We're gonna end with a nice split between the handles or pillars of the stairs and the doorway, just like that. Again, move along with the movement or move along with your jib. That's a better way of saying it. Now have a good sturdy foundation on the ground. Knees and toes should be firmly placed on the ground. And you wanna be at least shoulder width apart with your heels and knees slightly bent as well. What we're gonna do, we're gonna slide the cradle to the end of the slider, lock it up, and make sure that you have at least one hand on the opposite end of the slider at all times to counteract the weight that's on the other side. All right, and then we're gonna just pan, just like that, and loosen up the tripod's tilt, and just make a simple up and down movement. Make sure that your cradle is properly tightened, otherwise 
your cradle is going to be moving forward and backward and you don't want that just like that and even though sometimes I have a little bit of shakiness in my hands, the gimbal does an excellent job of counteracting that. And you can get very creative with these shots here. What I did, I put a Fresnel light on the second floor and I was able to get some beautiful light rays because of the fog machine that I was using. Now it's time for you guys to see exactly what I'm shooting with. All right, let's go for a little walk. We're gonna go into the kitchen area here. Right here, I have a Fresnel light from Kane TV. This is the 55 watt Boltzmann series light. This is a 5,600 degree Kelvin colored light. And I have it here to light up the fog a little bit and to give me some ambient light in this hallway and it actually helps light up the pillars on the stairs a little bit as well. Here I'm using a very cheap and I mean very very cheap fog machine from Party City. If you go to any party store I'm sure you'll find this for 20-30 bucks and I use just typical fog juice with a little bit of water to help soften up the fog so it's not too thick. Here we have a fancier FT717 fluid head tripod along with a 48 inch studio effects slider. I'll post all necessary links in the description box below so you guys can find this equipment, all right? And here I have the Zhuin Crane Plus gimbal along with the Sony A7S, okay? Now I'm walking around here. This is my Benro tripod that I use to mount my A9. And here we have another Boltzmann series Kane TV 55 watt light peering through this nice planter here. And again, it helps me out with lighting uh, the stairs, gives us this extra dimension on the pillars here. If we go outside, you can see that I have another light out here that gives us that beamy look. And that's that was a fog machine. And this actually is caused by the fog. The fog allows us to get that nice beam coming in through these windows. So let me show you the aperture light that I'm using. Here it is. This is the Lightstorm 1 half W. I did a review on this light, so uh, make sure you check it out. I'll post a link for it. Sorry, it's really bright. And there's actually one light I forgot to talk about. And that is the Falcon Eyes uh, 100 watt LED panel. And this uh, helps light me up uh, and gives me uh, more ambient lighting and it's colored towards 5600 degree Kelvin. Okay, let's go upstairs because we have another Fresnel light set up. Here we have a Fresnel light from Aperture. This is a 30 watt light. This is called the LS Mini 20D. I also have a review on this. so. Make sure you check it out. And it's powered by a Sony MPF style battery. So that's what I'm using to shoot this tutorial for you guys. All right guys, well I hope this tutorial has helped you out in becoming a more creative filmmaker using these three simple tools. I'll leave links for these tools in the description box below, so make sure you check them out. Also, don't forget to give this video a big like, share it with your friends, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to see what you create. Bye-bye.